Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, what we've been always transparent about is that we will continuously evaluate the data that comes out um, of this. There's uh, data that we were expecting at the beginning of the year, but also there was data that we're expecting at the end of January, which we did get. And so as per our commitment, we said we will review the data as it comes out. And now around the 20th or so of January, that's when we received some of this data. We reviewed it with our technical experts. And that's when we came to the decision that because there's still insufficient data that indicates that this is a drug um, that can be used for the treatment of COVID or even for prophylaxis. But also what we noted was that as we looked at these data um, clinical trials, as much as they were not well designed, we also acknowledge that there isn't data that says it's effective, that shows the benefit, but also that shows the harm. So there is this what um, you know clinicians call a clinical um, equipoise. And it's on that basis, and also on looking at um, you know, the second wave that we were facing in the country where people were dying, the numbers were increasing, that we said we needed to come to some um, controlled mechanism of access for this product. Yeah. So it's after considering all of this, wherein we said, while we await data from the clinical trials, let's have a mechanism where this, day, this, this drug can be accessed in a very controlled mechanism, yeah. wherein we would know who it's given to, what is their clinical status, and are there any side effects, and who gives it to them, and at what doses. Yeah. So this program that we published on the 28th of January articulates all of that. Now, some uh, uh, in the sector have said, well, is it not that the process that governs research and development for medicines in particular, for regulators, the global gold standard is, uh, uh, go is, 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 is controlled randomized trials, uh, but at a scale uh, that will certainly pass the threshold that is set by the regulator uh, for them to be approved. And that so far has not been met. And so why did you buckle? So indeed, um, you know, that um, has not been met. Uh, we still are waiting more data. The most recent data we had was sitting with about 7,000 or so um, patients. And the reason why our position, uh, you know, moved from when where we were in December was because other data came through um, towards the end of January, as I've indicated. We've all looked at this, but also we had to consider the context that we operate in, in that there are limited options that are available. So from a scientific base, our position has not changed. We remain to say the data is insufficient for us to make a regulatory decision in terms of a wide access of this drug. And that's why we put in a very stringent um, access uh, mechanism, tightly controlled, wherein we would know exactly who is utilizing it so that we can also use that as a source of generating data. We've also engaged with the research community and we're expecting about three clinical trial studies to be submitted to us. Now, there is a court order that you agreed to uh, in agreement with SAPRA. That essentially means now doctors don't even have to wait for the Section 21 process. Yes, they have to apply, give the application, but after giving you the application, they can just go ahead and prescribe that medicine. What are the unintended consequences of that? And have you considered that could, this could possibly be uh, setting a standard for other health products in the future that, uh, well, if there is enough pressure, this is what will happen? Yeah, and I, I definitely need to correct this because that's definitely not the case, right? So what we have done is we haven't succumbed to any legal challenge because as a regulator, our decisions are science-based. So this program that we've published, we've been talking about this program with the scientific community since the middle of January, when we realized that the pace of data coming out is slower than what we expected. So this is something that we were doing anyway. And so when the court challenge came, we then said, actually, this is a program that we are implementing. Can you consider this and can you accept that? So we will not succumb to any legal challenges. Definitely not. That's not how we work as a regulator. Our decisions are based on science. So what we're saying in this program is that there's three tiers of authorization. The first level is that a manufacturer um, that um, provides this drug will have to be licensed by SAPRA. So every single one who would be bringing in this product, they have to be licensed. If they're not licensed, they are breaching the Medicines Act. And we will have to get our law enforcement team 
to go after those, those individuals or those companies. So every single, and we know now, because we've authorized some companies, there's a handful of those that are authorized. The second tier is we authorize healthcare facilities to keep stock of this so that where it's required, it is then made available. Then the third tier is where we authorize the healthcare practitioner to issue it on what we call a name patient base pay, pay basis. So in that case, and I mean, our turnaround time, we've said it's 20, 24 hours. So we make a decision that quickly. So when you apply, we would be able to get back to you. If we need more information, we would reach out to you and try right. to get that information. But we make the decision quite quickly. All so right. it's definitely not um, the way that it has been put out, I think, in the public. And we needed to correct that. All right, Dr. Samita, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. The CEO of the Thank South African you. Health Products Regulatory Authority there.